Tuesdays, the Omni X-Men are here for you. We are back. We are live. X-Men 104. And I'm with No Good Comics himself, Justin. How's it going, man? Hello. Going pretty good, John. Uh, had some, some internet issues there for a second, but we are up and running. And it is Tuesday night, so I'm excited. You are running five by five, looking great, <laughs> sharp. Some awesome books behind you. I see some of those... Uh, Alex Ross, uh, Timeless, looks like the FF are all accounted for. Oh, yeah, they're all up there. They are all up there. I even got some Thor and some Thor uh, and Hulk. Hulk. Yeah, yeah I got some Hulk action. You got some Hulk action. I don't know what that is. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do have Hulk there. Nice. <laughs> We're going to be talking about all new, all different X-Men issue 104. I didn't even pull the my copy out of the box here. Um, clearly, I'm off my game. I got my copy right here, John. Yeah, let's do that. Whoa, look at that. Oh, what oh, wait. In the what? Oh, wait, wait. Sorry. What the, the what? The homage. It just gets me sometimes. Uh, so I just, you know, sometimes I take the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry, I had to show I had to show this off. <laughs> that, of course. Well, of course. Any Anytime I get a chance to show that off. But this is the nice uh, 6 And this is a... Uh, um, Oh no! This is well. It's white pages. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice, uh, nice copy. Well, and thanks to you, I have a copy as well because you sent me this issue. Yeah, man. I got the, I got the note from you right there on the back. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good stuff, man. Help. Yeah, it is a great, uh, a great throwback to issue one, and uh, yeah. yeah, so good, so classic, definitely. Uh, and technically, this isn't an all new, all different. Uh, this issue is just X Men issue one hundred and four, right? I don't think there's any all new, all different, or uncanny. Mm. So it's technically this is now we're into just X Men. Yep. But, hey, whatever. Yep. So let's say hello to people we got in the chat. We had P J King nice. tailgating in here early. Thank you, sir. P J. We got Ricky in the chat. That uh, looks like he's got Deadpool with Yoda on his back. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I like that. Hello. Hello, Todd Christian. Thanks for coming by. What's up, Todd? Magic Lasso says, hey, John, comment with Hidden Justin. Hey, everyone. What's the difference between a suitcase and Magneto? Magneto only has one outfit. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Burn. I will say that Magneto always looks ripped in his outfit. I've never seen Magneto in any way out of shape. So It's true. And Jackson Roy Kirk is clearly with me because he says he wears it. Well, there you go. <laughs> boom and double boom. We got Comics Kings Brandon in the chat. Nice. He was our guest last time uh, when we were on my channel for issue 102. He was also the guest on your channel for one of your recent uh, getting to know the comic. My, my comic collector. Oh, yeah, Origins. Yeah. Yep. Just this Saturday. So if you don't know Brandon, you should check out his channel. And he's on Instagram as well. Yep, yep. Let's see here. I see uh, people chatting, the, saying how they're going. Uh, I did like Lasso saying you could put a She-Hulk timeless variant up with those FF because she was a member. That's that's a great point. Great point. And John I know Burton. that uh, you know that <clears throat> the the new F FF at one point included what Spider Man, Wolverine, Ghost Rider, and Hulk. Right. Oh. So technically, the Hulk counts. But I think it was the Gray Hulk, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Beta Ray Jim, how are you? <clears throat> What's up, Beta? The one and only Reggie collects the comic book Swolger is in the chat. What's up, Reggie? I'm not wearing my Reggie collects shirt last night, uh, tonight, but I was wearing it last time. So, you know, it's funny. I feel like you have had his shirt on or one of his shirts at least the past like two or three weeks, and now you don't. And now he's in the chat. <laughs> the one time I don't wear it, the one time I don't wear it. It is. I keep telling everybody, it is the most comfortable community member T-shirt I have ever purchased. Period. So shout out to that. <clears throat> and let's see here. I think that is it. I think we're all caught up. Oh, we're, you pause there for a second. You might have oh. glitched on me a little bit. He says it's a good shirt. <laughs> there you go, Reggie. <laughs> So nice. we're talking about issue 104 of, of, of X-Men, the Claremont run. We're reading through the omnibus here. Stick around for the end. We're going to continue to ask trivia questions about last week's episode, issue 103. And you have a chance to be entered into some of the raffles for the omnibus volume two we're going to be giving away. Or I should say Justin's going to be giving away. 
and the uh, X-Men mystery box that I'll be giving away. So there's some fun giveaways you can get just for hanging and answering questions. Yeah, that's right. And uh, one other thing to remind everybody, um, we are going to take a break next Tuesday. I know we've been going on a pretty good run here of uh, uh, Tuesdays straight through, um, but because of the holiday and uh, and everything with family and stuff, uh, we are going to take a little bit of a break. So we will skip ne- this following Tuesday uh, for Thanksgiving, but then we'll back um, um, and we'll- just a quick minor. Yeah, My sorry. Season. I think you might have paused out on us there for a second, but yeah, so it, the next show is on Justin's channel and the link to his channel is down below, uh, but it'll be in two weeks on, I think it's December 1st and we will have the, the, the comeback kid himself, Justin, uh, sorry, Justin, Jeffrey comic con Henson is going to be joining us for issue one Oh five. So it's, it's Jeffrey's earliest copy or issue of, of X-Men. And so he's going to reread his own copy. I'm sorry, uh, Chet, He's going to read his own copy of it and then join us for the discussion to go with it. Hello, Jennifer. Comics will break your heart. Thank you for hanging with us. Okay. Um, I actually, I think that I am going to jump off and just jump on my phone because I know my phone will work and I've, I noticed you're glitching still. Or So, yeah, go for it. Give it a shot. Come back in and I will, my, I will hold it down while you're gone. Okay. So we're talking issue 104 of X-Men. For those that are, don't know what this issue is about, this is obviously the triumphant return of Magneto. Uh, <clears throat> he had not faced this new team yet. This new team that dropped as of issue giant size number one and then 94 through 103 has not had to face down against Magneto. Magneto is primed for facing these guys because of course magneto powers of magnetism facing colossus all metal wolverine skeleton of metal how will this new team face down that's the that's the excitement the drama the thrill of this issue and it's kind of what makes this issue a whole lot of fun Uh, my score out of 10 i'm gonna definitely give this a higher grade than the last few we've done I'm going to give this a 9.0 or a 9 out of 10 uh, on my scale. I think this issue has great artwork, absolutely great artwork. I think it's a whole lot of fun and exactly what you'd expect from X-Men versus Magneto. I think this issue pays off a lot of stuff. It's still weird. It's still odd. There's still a couple of strange choices that that the writing and artist team make. But overall, I think this this issue is a real kick in the pants. So I'm going to give it a 9.0. I think that's great, John. Uh, by the way, am I coming in okay? Yeah, you sound great. You look great. Cool. So, um, yeah, couldn't agree more. I definitely put this up in the nines. Um, I mean, I love the the epic battles. I mean, I know we're going to show some panels here, but the, the scenes that they have, um, this is an issue that stood out to me uh, from my first time around that I read it, where I just, I remember, like, after going through this where I'm just like, all right, 104, I think is one of my favorites. Um, and I think a lot of it just has to do with the fact that Magneto comes in and just dominates everybody. Uh, the fact that the team is just not ready at all and doesn't even understand like why they're not able to do what they do. Um, and I don't know, just seeing his confidence and like domination of this is really badass. So I think that's something that just stood out to me. Um, you know, obviously it's the good guys kind of losing, uh, which isn't necessarily good, but, uh, but it's just, it's a great, I thought it was a great way to really highlight Magneto, especially for the new readers. I mean, for, you know, this being the new time and all, uh, you know, Magneto kind of being reintroduced. Um, I would say there's definitely some weird stories, uh, that they tie in a little bit, um, you know, Magneto being a baby and things like that, uh, you know, which, you know, we can talk about a little more. Um, but yeah, so definitely a little, some weird things, but like you said, the artwork's amazing. Um, just the cover alone is something it's, it's worth to have um and so yeah up in the nines for me as well nice uh lasso asks does magneto learn of the phoenix in this issue no in fact the phoenix really takes much of a break for this issue except for a couple of panels um so we don't get a ton of gene gray in this issue but he does get to face down against the new team and that's the main kind of draw i think here hello hack he says happy uh, chat happy tuesday so thank you for coming by. Um, 
so yeah, this issue definitely focuses a lot on Magneto. I do. You mentioned the idea that this is an issue where the new team loses. And I think up to now, you could argue they've had it, I don't want to say easy, because obviously an X-Men died. But it does seem as though they uh, they triumph over evil pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> they find a solution rather quick. And, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know. I, there are, yeah, it, it definitely is interesting to see um, that they just, the way that they get, like, truly dominated. And the fact that they're just baffled of not understanding like what, like what's happening or like, why can't, you know, why am I just, why is Colossus, you know, just being thrown around the way he is. It's like, you know, interesting to, to think of from his pers perspective. And Brandon says he liked 102 better, less Cyclops. <laughs> <clears throat> so I will say, uh, um, I like it when heroes fail. I like it when heroes lose. I yeah. like when they struggle and are challenged. So for me, I, I, that that made this issue almost better. The fact that the team, which is clearly not even built to fight Magneto, is clearly outgunned by him, and I thought that worked out really well. Yeah, yeah, That's a good point. Oh, Chet, he said he's got an annoying client with a long phone call, but he's here now. So welcome in, good sir. <coughs> so let's jump to the uh, <coughs> to the slideshow here. Sorry, Ooh, choking on a little something there. This is the uh, the great cover we were talking about. Wonderful uh, artwork uh, on this piece. The striations of color from yellow down to like a deep orange in the background. Solid stuff. And then like you were saying, homage, throwback, what have you, to uh, issue one. Uh, I love all of it. Yeah. And, it, and just the, the bright yellow. I love yellow covers, even if it is just the background. Uh, you know, it always just something that pops to me. And so if you can find this, you know, in, in a nice condition, I mean, it's, it's, it's even nicer. So um, hello, Biggie Shack. What's up? Hey, uh, let's see here. Okay. So let's, uh, let's get this all started here with another day, another X-Men vacation. They're going out on a cruise. I feel like we've had a ton of going on vacation, traveling around the world, going on boats yep. and, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to their costumes in this because they're showing up at the docks to go out on a boat they've chartered and they're all in uniform. <laughs> they look like wrestlers on vacation or something. It's it's <laughs> hilarious to me that they all just show up down there. And Nightcrawler's not even like using the technology to change his appearance. He's yeah. just like, hey, everybody, how's it going? And, they're, yeah. they're, and the locals are just like, walk away. Don't even look at it. <laughs> Crazy. Hello, TK. How's it going, man? Yo. Yeah. I mean, you'd think on the shores of Ireland here, it'd be wicked cold. Storms in her like casual like lingerie. The whole thing, I just it's it's hilarious to me. <laughs> yeah. All right. And and this is the next page. It's this epic spread page mm -hmm. that covers both sides of the of the of the comic. And I just there's so much story in these pages. It's kind of like, oh my God, this was one of my, I felt like this is one of the strangest decisions just to shove all of this into two pages and hope that the audience gets all of it. Yeah, it was definitely a lot. And especially cramming in all the, uh, you know, the dialogue in the smaller boxes just to then hit you with the big one, you know, down below. But um, it was actually, this is one of those, um, those panels that when I was reading digitally for the first time, I liked the flow of things because it just kept you, you know, in each individual panel. And then when you hit the big one, like the experience of seeing that explosion was a little bit more real, which is cool. Yeah. And I feel like you flip the panel open and the boat explodes and you're like, whoa, but then, but then you look and you have to read all the stuff before it explodes across the top, which right. seems a little like it's a little disjointed. Also the story across the top has a ton of things happening. First, they argue with the guy who owns the boat. He's like, I'm not going to let you take the boat. Then Colossus does his threatening little, you know, uh, you're, you know, you're, we're taking this boat. Then you have a shot of him hung on the on the boat hook and they're driving off without him. With the money falling out. <laughs> with, the, yeah, with the money. Yeah. Then they're driving off without him in, towards the island and they're having all these conversations and thoughts and they're having all these discussions and then the boat blows up. I feel like they packed in a ton of stuff. Uh, story-wise, chronologically in here. They definitely did, for sure. Uh, that was frustrating, by the way, that old man 
um, kind of being a douche and just not uh, just For because no reason, they're wearing right? their costumes. Yeah, yeah just because they're right. wearing their costumes. It's like, come on. Which I, I will admit, I don't think I chose a douche of the week, and it would probably be this guy. So oh, I, yeah. there you. is no douche of the week this week, so it's nice of you that you brought it up for me. <laughs> hello to DJ Sick Rick. I didn't say hello to you out loud. I didn't say hello to TK out loud. Hello, guys. Thanks for hello, coming. Hello. So, I mean, this is a beautiful page, and I like the unusual layout. For me, it was just too much story in, in one set of pages i think they could have organized it a little better but i love the splash or spread across the bottom and you get like everybody flying through the air with this crazy explosion thing yeah one thing too i want to note with that that bottom large large uh, bottom panel is the fact that uh when i first saw this i thought to myself another object being br uh, broken in half or blown up you know just like all these planes that we've seen in so many issues you know we're under 20 issues here and we, we see this a lot. <laughs> it's very a ton. It's something with them and boats and planes and you know. Well, and that that's what I loved about this next page so much. Nightcrawler and Banshee seem to get it. Nightcrawler says, uh, uh, "How uh, how kind of you to ask? But why is it that every time we ride in something mechanical, it crashes?" It's true, man. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> so Nightcrawler is the audience surrogate with that line. He is definitely speaking all of our thoughts as far as like. Airports, airplanes, space shuttles, cars. Now we've got a second boat. Yep. A lot of destroyed machines. And on the side, you get you get uh, Banshee saying, it didn't explode, Nightcrawler. Everything metal came alive. The ship literally tore itself to pieces. And what I like about it and don't like about it, I like that he's sussing it out. I don't like that he's not smart enough to know I faced Magneto. I know Magneto. And that's what Magneto's power. I mean, that... That felt that felt like the sorority night uh, serial killers movie or whatever, where the prom girl, the, you know, the sorority girls are like, "Yeah, I heard a strange sound upstairs. Let's go investigate." <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, I I think it's just you know he had such doubt that uh, you know that Magneto was still around. Like, there's no you know no way, no way that it could have been. It could be. And backstory for other people watching, uh, I don't know exactly how and where it happens, but the idea was the last time they faced Magneto, he was turned into a child, a baby of some kind. So the idea that Magneto would be back and ready to fight with full power is not really conceivable to Banshee in some ways. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I have not read that storyline, but uh, I have I actually, not either. I might go back and, and, and skim through the issue that it re references just, just for some reference. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's take a look here. Moira has a sweet castle. Look at this thing. That's a lab. But look at the size of that. It's like Doom's castle from the Secret Wars. Yeah, seriously. Fancy. It's huge. And then they, it's got a whole force field around it. So they come running to check it out. Uh, Colossus going headfirst into it gets knocked down. But yeah, she's got security, force fields, and a giant castle. Uh, Chet says, X-Men 51, Banshee uh, should have thought of Polaris at least. There you go. True. That's a good point. Yeah. So what did you think of her laboratory? Because it seems like she owns an island with a giant castle on it to me. Yeah. it's it's And to know that she's you know essentially just being hired to, to work around – the X-Men's, uh, you know, mansion. It's like, wait a second. So like she has this job where she's working at our mansion, but yet she has this whole, you know, laboratory here. It's, uh, you know, things are not adding up, you know? Right. It, it is certainly fancy for sure. Uh, Eric, the red is issue 52. Okay. So that's what it's issue 52. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Boy, we're really downgraded. She has, she is, she's locked in some little corner somewhere on Krakoa right now, but like, Back in the day, she had an island and a castle. So, and I do think it's funny because so far we've only known her as like a maid, uh, a house cleaner. Yeah. And now it's like she's a doctor, she's got a lab and an island. Yep. That's what I mean. It's, it just came out of nowhere. Does it feel, I mean, this is how it feels to me. It feels like they retconned a character who wasn't even one year old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, She's she's been in these comics maybe three times, and they're already retconning her. So she's not a housekeeper; she's actually a doctor. 
Yeah, and I still think of her as the chick with the with the gun running, you know, running to shoot that. Uh, the right, movie. she's got her AR fifteen and she's taking out, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, monsters and things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> John, no mention of Barefoot Storm. Yeah, I was gonna highlight that. Great call, Jackson. If you look down in the corner or down here at the bottom, there's that one image of Storm. She's pouring water from the ocean out of her costume, where it clearly got stuck in some way. And just going barefoot on the beach. Storm is, I've never seen her be so quiet and just like non-leader role. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice that. <laughs> Very chill down there. And I just, I love that like everybody's having these conversations and she's like, I don't care about the castle. I'm just going to get, there's like salt water in my costume. <laughs> right. Can't have that. Mutant governess. There you go. She's a mutant governess. Mm. There you go. Um, let's see here. So then... They are attacked by having the ground under them take off and fly at the building. They're going to get crushed on the side. But Banshee takes a leadership role here and decides to, that they should just hit this thing as hard as they can with all of their powers and blast their way through this outer wall of the building. Um, so Banshee gets a lot of moments to shine here in the beginning of this book. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Um, I like that panel at the bottom right. Um, it was a cool way to kind of see the team, uh, you know, just all kind of react at once. Although I guess Nightcrawler, he doesn't really do anything. <laughs> he just kind of, I mean, even uh, even Wolverine to some extent can't really do anything at the wall. Right. You know, at least until he gets by the time Wolverine. he cuts it, he's crushed into it. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this, CJ uh, DJ Sick Rick says it's one of her many lives. So maybe you know we don't know we do know that is her power now, right? She, yeah. According to Jonathan Hickman, now she's got all these lives that she's lived. So maybe they're intersecting here. Yeah. yeah. They break through to the other side to fight an unseen foe, and this is mine. Oh, I forgot to add that this is also Justin's favorite oh, yeah. panel. Um, both of us. I did not have time after work today to like add any lines. It's all, <laughs> it's all good. So yeah. this is both of our favorite panel, the reveal of Magneto, uh, this this one-page spread. I'm a big splash page fan, uh, obviously. Yeah. And this is a pretty spectacular one. W what did you like about this one? Well, again, for like just uh, my experience of how I read this right off the bat, uh, being being digital the first time around, um, that that page really hits you. Um, you know, when you're swiping and you don't see anything else but this, um, you know, obviously I have the feeling of that, you know, something is that they're going to introduce him somehow, but for him to just be so, again, just that dominance in him and, uh, and so confident, um, you know, I am Magneto, like it, it's, it is a bad ass scene and just everything around him, the destruction behind him, the way he's glowing, uh, you know, his hand is up like that. Um, it is awesome. Totally agree. I love the glow, uh, the destruction. Yeah, everything about it, the pose. And then the I am Magneto with the pink outlining and the lettering. So cool. Yep. Uh, just a great, yeah, great villain reveal. Absolutely awesome. Todd Christian says he, it's a cool moment for Banshee, and he's a big fan of Banshees. He thinks he's underutilized or underused most of the time. I could totally agree with that. I feel like he's almost like jokey most of the time. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Chet says this panel of Magneto is great. Wait to see the final page of 111. Same type of reveal art. So much more sinister. Nice. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, it's a cool reveal. He's got he got a little bit of monologuing going on. Uh, but you know, hey, for a panel this good, I'll allow monologuing. Totally. Yeah. Um, so then we cut away. We get a little bit of Moira and Psych. Uh, they're on their way because something's bothering uh, uh, Moira about her lab and Cyclops and her have raced off to try to get there. There's a ton of backstory on these pages here. Uh, firstly, we get the reveal, I guess, that Moira is also a doctor and has a lab. We get a little bit of her backstory of who she is. And of course we get the multiple man. I don't know if you've heard of Jamie Madrox here. Yeah, I know a little bit about him just from some of the, the stuff that I read right before Hickman took over because I, I read like the last I don't know, 13 or 12 issues and he, he was played a part. And I, and I just knew of him, but I don't know. I didn't know much. I didn't know too much. I, I kind of understood his powers and stuff, but I don't know much about his history. Yeah, I, I will say I don't know a lot of his key issues. I didn't realize th uh, that uh, he was this 
that his character went back this far. Uh, but the multiple man, it's cool to see him in this fun little cameo. He's only on this these two pages. Uh, what is it? Three, four panels. Yeah. He is knocked unconscious. He's, he taught, and then he basically gives the backstory to all of this where yet again, Eric the Red in his unusual little uh, dominatrix costume uh, is, is back behind the scenes kind of manipulating stuff. And he was involved in aging magneto up to his multi his max potential and then uh, i love my favorite is you know the, the eric the red sitting in the comfortable yellow chair and magneto waving his fist at him and they're having this sort of odd little uh debate about about what to do about the x-men they talked yeah. all day eric suggesting an alliance against the x-men a two-pronged attack Magneto was furious, humiliated at being a baby in Xavier's hands. He wanted vengeance. <laughs> I so just want to say, John, uh, I, I, I it, it, it's, um, I hate when that happens. You know, when you get, you're there, you're hanging out, out of nowhere, you get turned into a baby. Next thing you know, you're just like, what's, oh, what's going on? It's so annoying, right? I feel it's, Magneto's frustration. Right? Everybody's been there. Everybody's been yeah. there. <laughs> Hello, Jester Rican in his comics. Rod is here. What's up, Rob? That was a, that was a super fun show you were doing just a little bit ago. I'm sorry I wasn't able to stay to the end. PJ King says this comic was prescient because this comic was published in '77. Two years later, Lord Mountbatten was assassinated by the IRA in a fishing boat. The troubles in Northern Ireland escalating. You know, PJ, it's amazing that you brought that up because I was watching The Crown last night with my wife. The new season of The Crown. It reenacts that very moment, the assassination of uh, Lord Mountbatten, because it occurred almost exactly at the time when Charles was getting engaged to Diana. And uh, they're covering that in this current season that just dropped of The Crown. So it's interesting that you brought that up. I didn't realize that this issue came out at the same time, that that uh, that the, the, the fishing boat and the IRA and we're in the story is in Ireland and they're on a boat and their boats exploding. It's kind of interesting that all that would happen simultaneously. Did you want to talk a little bit about baby Magneto there? Uh, <laughs> evolving. <laughs> that, I mean, that, that was really it. I just wanted to say, you know, I hate when that happens. Um, it is odd. It is very odd. I, I, I don't know. I, I will go back. I think I will go back and just read that issue that it references um, just to get a little bit of a backstory. Um, there's another one. There's another uh, issue that's referenced here. I forget which panel it is. Or, They're mentioning uh, Descenders 16. Um, and then they talked about Mag uh, the last time they saw Jamie, uh, the multiple man. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of want to read those and, and just even – anything that ties in of things that I haven't read, uh, you know, just to kind of explore a little more, but it is. Sure. Well, you still have an incredible Hulk annual to read. I think I do. Yes, I do <laughs> <laughs> on my list. <laughs> Chet, I'm keeping an eye on him. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. So then we jump back to, uh, just a really prolonged set of encounters with all the new team trying to face down against Magneto. He's, he's throwing Wolverine around. He's throwing Cy uh, Colossus around. He's even like going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Storm, which I have a ton of questions about. But I wanted to hear your thoughts on this uh, this battle, new team versus Magneto. So, yeah, I, I loved it right from the get-go, just seeing him toss the guys around the way he did. Um, and especially the way that they were so aggressive and confident in going into it, just like, all right, let's just like tear this guy up. And Magneto, like a lot of the things he was saying there, um, I, I mean, you know, it really, he can really back, I, I think I, I wrote like, uh, you know, he can really back uh, his, his uh, or his bite matches his bark or whatever. Right. Um, you know, <laughs> because like, he's really good. Like he's, you know, really saying things that are just getting under their skin. And and yet he's delivering at the same time. And they're all just like scrambling. Um, it's a good point that you bring up about Storm, though. I didn't really, I didn't really think about that. Um, but kind of, yeah, what, what happens there exactly? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, I, I mean, obviously I, I feel like it's hilarious. And I think they even did a Saturday night live skit on like Xavier test driving mutants who might be good for the X-Men. And he goes through and he's like, what, you know, our main villain is, is a guy who can control metal. Why am I picking all these guys whose bodies have metal in them? Cause it, it's, it's, it is a bit, 
I, I don't want to say coincidental, but like hilarious that, that he has picked Wolverine and Colossus to go against Magneto. It's just bad. It's just bad odds all the way around. Yeah. Um, also, I wanted to mention, uh, I don't know if it was, it might've been in one of the panels, but it was that you just showed before, but it uh, had to do with um, Cyclops just explaining to Moira, like, I got to go help the team because we never thought that he'd come back and we just never warned the team about him. I don't know. I yeah, just feel like Moira, get Jamie out of the jet and be ready to take it off at a moment's notice. Um, yeah, he did. He, uh, let's see. I don't think he, yeah, I don't think I kept the other line. He says, sorry. No, that's all right. But, he, but you know what I'm talking about, right? He, yes. He basically, he basically says, says like, they weren't, you know, they're not ready. Right. And I just thought it was kind of weird that like, you know, if, if Magneto is that big of a deal, even though he was quote unquote handled, like, I feel like if you're going to be an X-Men, be part of the X-Men, there should be some stuff that, that is taught that's like, okay, just so you know, this is one of our evilest dudes, and here's how we defeated him. And, you know, you know, just they should at least know who he was and his power so that they go, oh, or at least so here they know, like, okay, we, we need to get out of here. We can't take him yeah. on like this. You know, right. I just thought it was kind of weird that, like, they... I don't know. Professor X and Cyclops never bothered in considering, like, hey, like, let's at least like do a little, you know, schooling with them and 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 educate them on like some of our past, you know, villains here. Absolutely. Hello to Legion of Comics. Thank you, uh, Jackson. Worker asks, will they explain later how Eric knew uh, Eric the Red knew that that Magneto was in this place and that they would have to age him. I, I think we have a bunch of questions about Eric the Red's plan, about where he gets his information, and about his ultimate goals yeah. that that might come to light in some future issues. But I don't remember distinctly getting all the answers I wanted. Yeah, me neither. Uh, I think there are definitely some things that are left unsaid. Chet says, Justin, DM me the address. I'll send you my third copy of Annual Hulk Annual 7. <laughs> oh, are you sure I'm okay to open that up and touch that thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't open it up you have to still read it digitally though yeah yeah just look at it. yeah just, <laughs> i read it digitally so i've earned it i'm already gonna say <laughs> alex king says you know that kevin hart line from his comedy no she wasn't ready, she wasn't ready. <laughs> that's this team for sure nobody <laughs> considers the babies yep <laughs> the old x-men could um more uh called Moira, but Magneto was a baby when the new team formed. Professor X and I never figured out on, uh, never, sorry, Professor X and Scott never figured on facing him again, so they never trained the new team. There you go. Got but it. even not, not even just to train them, but just to like, to like let them know, like, hey, by the way, there was a crazy guy once and this is how we beat him. I don't know. Just, yeah, exactly. Just, like, just history, you know, like just go over your history. <laughs> Chet says you can look at it. <laughs> Nice. Thanks. Big e, just uh, j what answers do you want about Diana Ross and the Supremes? Sure, why not? Right. <laughs> All right. So uh, the fight is pretty amazing, and, and our team does not do well. You see Colossus being thrown through a wall out into the ocean, which obviously uh, a man all in metal doesn't want to land in the middle of the ocean. Um, yeah. So I have a couple of questions of the chat. Maybe they can help, or maybe you, Justin, know. I've never heard of him reversing electricity like like Storm's lightning. That's a new gig. Um, that's yeah. new. Uh, I, I I like the way he fights Nightcrawler with like like the way Darth Vader fights Luke by just throwing crap at him. Um, yeah, I dig that. He even says that he can sense where Nightcrawler is going to appear because of the vibrations in the magnetic fields. That's new to me. I don't remember that move. And then lastly, when he fights Banshee, who you think, you know, Banshee's the one who's going to have the best shot. This is interesting. He pulls, he says, he says it's a matter, uh, a simple matter to pull ferrous particles from the wreckage from the very air and fuse them around your body. Where's your bravado now, Banshee? You're sealed within your own form fitting coffin. Your air is gone, and in a few moments, your life will be gone as well. What the what? I've, <laughs> yeah, I've, these are for me. This is like it's like mag. It's like you you beat Magneto in level one, and then somehow you make it to level twenty, and now Ma you face a new Magneto with all new powers. This is like a whole new layer, and I've never seen him use these powers outside of this moment. 
Well, so he does mention in the later that, you know, he feels like this all new, well, he feels like he's like, you know, stronger than ever before. He feels great. Uh, you know, maybe he kind of discovered some tricks along the way. I can't say, you know, I, I don't know enough of his, you know, different fight scenes and stuff through the years, uh, you know, if they've ever revealed anything like this before. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's just him just kind of discovering some stuff. Um, I definitely agree, Beta Ray Jim. He has leveled up for sure. This is this is Magneto on steroids. Uh, it's new, but pretty much defines magnetism to the fullest with his powers. I dig it too. It's wicked yeah. cool. I just, I feel like if he could do it then, when did he lose the power to do this? Because I've never seen him pull some of these moves again. Yeah, very true. I love the Banshee one. That was like one of my favorite, especially oh. just what he said. The, the stuff that you just read there is just like, he's so, you know, himself there, just confident, oh, yeah. crushing them. like So creepy. So yeah. creepy. And yeah. this is back in the day when I think Magneto was not black or not gray it was just black and white this guy was bad guy there was no there was no middle ground at this point it was it felt like it took a long time for him to find gray a grayer personality he is pretty straight up evil right here like sealing banshee in a in a form-fitting coffin and letting him suffocate that's dark Whoa. That's dark. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even throwing Colossus into the ocean and just knowing that he's going to drown, you know, and his weight and he can't, and the, oh, they said that he can't turn back to, to Peter because he's, uh, you know, the, the, the cold weather or the cold water would like kill him. I thought right. that was really interesting too. I don't remember. Did they, how, did they explain how he got out of that? I don't remember. That he does. Time. He does say a little something when he walks onto the shore. Um, oh, that's right. He just kind of comes stumbling on like, right. <laughs> he's like, Hey guys, like, Magneto hey. has had a lot of nap time to dream up new uses for his powers. <laughs> <laughs> Chet says issue one twelve. He does it again. So there you go. There you go. Damn. Yeah. I believe this issue. They imply that in his metal form, he doesn't need to breathe. Uh, yeah, right. It's an it's implied, and I think Chet mentioned that when we uh, were talking about can he breathe underwater or in space. Right. Uh, Chet said that issue one hundred and four is going to let you know. So here we go. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But Cyclops is this week's MVP. He saves everybody in this issue. Yep. Look at them. He's he's pulling the rubble off of Nightcrawler. He's blasting Banshee out of his thing, dragging him out of the wreckage, fighting off. Uh, a, uh magneto i feel like this guy uh you know he, he he came solid and rescued everybody in this issue big time uh i think he was a leader in a lot of different ways including you know trying to get the team out of there and explain you know just telling them all like hey we you know let's all meet back at the at the uh the plane area of the ship and and uh and get out of here um while obviously also you know kind of fighting off or at least at least catching magneto off guard yeah absolutely and then you get magneto's like magnetism sort of trying to protect him i think this is this is hilarious cyclops yells you haven't beaten cyclops and then magneto says huh caught me off by surprise i was careless overconfident i got my shields up barely in time to deflect his blast and in my head i'm thinking so you're saying that because cyclops yelled before he shot at you you were able to defend yourself so if cyclops hadn't said anything he could have just blasted him just killed him cyclops yeah, Brandon, and maybe maybe Cyclops does suck. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I'm a Cyclops fan, and uh, I do like this moment. I feel like he gets to get his leadership role back, and and he is at the same time that he's rescuing everybody. I think he's catching on to the idea that the real f problem is somewhere else. He says, uh, "With Eric the Red involved, I have a hunt. There's more at stake here than just X Men versus Magneto." Find the others and head for the landing pad behind the lab. Move it, mister. There's no time to waste. So he's he's rushing them out of here, not because he's necessarily scared of Magneto and them not being ready, but I think he sees the fact that they're playing the wrong game right now. Yeah, and I think that was that's another thing that really stood out to me with um, just seeing his leadership kind of grow, um, especially compared to everyone else, uh, where he's just well aware of like the bigger picture uh, where everyone else – uh, you know, I'm sure you have the panels like where they just give him crap and they're just like, oh, like, you know, yeah, Wolverine, they're just like angry at him. Like, what? Why? Why are we going to run? Like, you know, they're still just so focused on that little current battle and they just don't see the big picture. Yeah. They're yeah. Cyclops and Wolverine, same as ever. 
Uh, the blazes we are, bub. This fight ain't over yet. It is as far as we're concerned. Says who? The X-Men team leader, Buster. Now do as I say, or I'll, so help me, I'll blast you and carry you out. That's <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> okay, Summers, this round goes to you, but from now on, bub, all bets are off. And then shout out to you, Mr. J Beta Ray Jim, or is it Jackson Roy Kirk? One of the, I think it's Beta Ray Jim. He, there's an Animan person right there on a screen. Oh, yeah, I saw that, yeah. <laughs> he said, huh? Oh, great. Looks like that bug-eyed broad's busted loose. <laughs> <laughs> Last seen in X Men '96, Animen. We have the Animen returning uh, for a glimpse. Don't uh, don't don't give it away. You know, should have went for the head. Always, yep. Always go for the head. <laughs> there it is. Beta Ray Jim says finally. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited when I saw that. I was like, "Oh, Beta Ray Jim's gonna be so happy." <laughs> so happy um so then yeah we see colossus marching back and he says i'm alive and as sick of water as nightcrawler when do we attack magneto cyclops <laughs> <laughs> so yeah they get aboard the ship they're racing off uh and wolverine says hey summers you could justify this till the day you die but it won't change the fact that you made us run you turn the x-men into cowards bub and that's something the wolverine will never forgive says the guy that you know what 300 something issues from now will have his entire skeleton torn from his body by magneto so Ugh. suck it <laughs> you're not made to fight that guy <laughs> yeah that, that was like kind of frustrating to read uh you know and just wolverine just not getting it you know um but uh by the way you're very you're very close very barely teetering your ben uh uh Oh, what's the actor's name? Um, ben Stiller's voice for uh, <laughs> Taj Mahal when you read Wolverine stuff. <laughs> like, almost there. You're not quite, but, like, I could picture that. Like, you know, <laughs> the bug part. Like <laughs> That's hilarious. That's Great. hilarious. <laughs> uh, well, he does seem real one-note-ish still. I feel like Wolverine has not found his second layer at this point. He's still pretty flat. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we got a glimpse of something when Jean Grey was in the hospital, but really it, it didn't hit yet. I feel like they're, they really haven't figured out how to play him yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing, too, is where uh, the fact that Cyclops does explain, like, why, like, guys, we're not running. You know, like, we are we are going back because we have to go, you know, protect uh, Professor X. Like, there's just this clear – he has a clear ex explanation, and, and it was just weird for him to have this explanation – and then Wolverine, you know, say what he said here at the end, <laughs> uh, you know, very unforgiving. And it's just like, dude, we're, we're, I just said we're not running. Like, I don't know. It's just kind of one of those moments where you kind of look around. And you're just like, did you not hear what I just said? Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Climbing Comics. And I hope you enjoy the replay. Uh, I All hope right. it's just as much fun. <laughs> Truthfully, if you really think about this show, every episode is a replay. Because we're, we're reading some pretty old comics here. True. Very true. Um, so yeah, Magneto is triumphant. He even says, leaving Magneto triumphant. Um, and there's this little throwaway shot in the back where it says mutant X, no, uh, no admittance. He leaves never noticing as behind him, a fine and private horror stirs and slowly comes awake. But that's a story for another time. Oh man. Yeah. Very exciting. But yeah, Magneto <laughs> wins. Our guys lose and our guys run off. Um, I, then, I do I do like when they sprinkle these little mysteries like the mutant X sign, you know, not like elaborate too much with a lot of panels or pages, but just this, you know, just little hints of like something that could come up later. It's I, I think that that's well done. It is definitely seems to be like a Claremont trope. Yeah. That he's always kind of dropping these little nuggets of, yeah, maybe this will play out later on. I know people get a lot of crap for people like uh, Jonathan Hickman or whatever that, that do the same kind of thing and just drop nuggets all over the place and maybe don't pick them all back up again. Um, but clearly this has been happening in the X-Men universe since issue 94 at least. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to me it's encouraging, or I guess at least for this stuff, knowing that they do pick up eventually, uh, you know, it's encouraging to know like, okay, cool. Like, we have another story of that, you know, eventually we're going to learn about this guy or, right. this thing or whatever. So for sure. So then we get our ending here and we get the, 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 the star jammer space cowboys with their bandanas and their earrings. And, 
And I don't even know. This is hilarious. And I, I do love the Star Jammers. I think their costumes are so wonderfully 70s. Um, and I, I want somebody to tell me if I'm pronouncing the, the, the fish guy's name wrong. But I've always called him Chode, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> it's probably Chod. But Chode, the fact that, that, that Chode has become slang for anatomy is hilarious that this character's <laughs> name is Chode. Um, I just the whole thing just cracks me up. Uh, yeah, I, it, I definitely did a double take when I was reading. <laughs> yeah, there's Chode. There's Chode, um, and he's got his little pet uh, thing around his his neck there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, this the first appearance of of uh, the Star Jammer crew. These two these two specific members, Corsair and Chode, get their little cameos here. But that's not all that he's giving us on this last page because he also gives us a second ending where yet again we see Lilandra flying and trying to get somewhere. We get a little bit more of her face. This is the most, I feel like. She actually kind of like speaks. Yeah. I mean, did, did, right? Like, I think that this isn't this like the, the clearest that we've seen her face, or did we see her I, face? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, some could argue that this is her first appearance. Uh, I've, I've heard that argument. I think the problem is she's one of those characters that has like so many cameos. You just go with the first full appearance as her right. first, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, yeah. When, when she shows up and she talks and she interacts and she's in several pages, that's like the true first for me. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just my thoughts. Such a superior time. hero reviews. Thanks for coming by, man. Hey. Um, yes, that was quite an outfit that uh, the Corsair was sporting there. You know, what are you going to do? Next time we see Magneto is when my X Men <coughs> fan uh, fanaticism was planted. Oh, there you go, hmm. there you go. Uh, he puts the tilde on top of the O, which I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Ch Ch chode Chode would have a flat line for a long O, right? And Chod, I don't know. I guess it's probably Chod, like Pod, instead of Chode, like. Toad, right, know. right, Chad. I don't know. I think it's hilarious either way. Um, <laughs> so this is our second ending, a little more Lilandra, and she's being chased with torpedoes being fired at her. And but that's not it. We get a third ending. All three of these panels on one, or all three of these sections on one page. Oh yeah. Our third ending has Xavier and Misty Knight taking Jean Grey to her parents in Greenwich Village. And outside the window is yet again Eric the Red with Polaris and Havoc plotting to attack. Yep. This that little scene of them looking in the window. I don't know why. I just I just thought of um, the cover from the older uh, Punisher issue where he's like um, about to you know bash through a window and take he's out everybody with the bazooka. Yeah, yeah, like issue, issue four or whatever. And I don't know why. I just I just think of that and. Uh, I'm like, okay, maybe that's the Punisher read this book, and he's like, that's yeah, that's Punisher. Going. That's Punisher, the regular series issue one. Hilarious! Oh that's my it. god, such a good cover. <laughs> yeah, such a good cover. So this, it, I think it was hilarious that they gave us three teases. You were talking about Claremont's knack for like yeah. dropping little nuggets. He gave three huge ones on this end of this issue. Yeah, that that is, uh, they are big ones for sure. Um, uh, like I said, it's encouraging that you know you know he's going to pick it up um, eventually. But uh, I mean, the, the Lilandra storyline has definitely been building for a while. So it's like this first time when I first read through this, I remember thinking like, "Come on, let's get to it!" Like I'm, cu I'm so curious, like where this is going, and you know, Xavier with the bad dreams and all these things. Like, what's happening? Um, so we're just that much closer now. I can't wait for Disney. To have Marvel and superhero stuff like rides. That would be cool, dude. That would be cool. Thanks, Rod. Much appreciated, man. So, yeah, this is the end of the issue. We get a little bit of tease. You get two panels that kind of have Gene in it. But really, this is about new team versus Magneto getting their butts kicked. Cyclops rescuing them, rushing them off. And it all just seems to be setting up this battle at the, the Gray household. Yep. So, that will have to be next in two weeks, two weeks, we're over on the No Good Comics channel with Jeffrey Comic Con. That'll be good. 
So let's jump into the little the little facts page here, the information, the deets. The deets. We got the first appearance of Cyclops and Havoc's father, Corsair. Yeah, yeah. First appearance of Chode or Ooh. Chod, <laughs> member of the Star Jammers. The first mention of Mutant X later Proteus. We got another Lilandra cameo. And I think it's kind of important that Moira officially stops being treated as a housekeeper now. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick on the uh, on the the first mention of Mutant X Proteus, I and this this is you know something that can go down a long conversation for another time. But I'm so curious what would have happened. Maybe they do a what if one day if Magne if Magneto saw that door and like opened it up you know um how that would have played out all together uh something to think about thanks biggie i appreciate that man nice eight the eight month tease of the landra <laughs> <laughs> i totally agree i mean it's like it's like jason aaron with his you know war of the realms like that was what six years right <laughs> hey, I, I feel like null's been coming since issue i mean ultimately we saw null trying to arrive on earth back in venom yeah. issue three yeah and now we're having issue 30 dude still hasn't come yet yep very true Chet says there's another fight that takes place in the gene uh in the gene and misty pad on iron man iron fist 15 oh. well nobody reads iron fist nobody would know that <laughs> So let's look at the multipliers here. A nine eight of this book goes for one thousand six hundred fifty bucks. This is another example of a book that's more than five times the multiplier. Yeah, I was kind of sad to see this because, I mean, I actually I was shopping for a, a pretty high grade of this book at one point. I wanted white pages. I, I wanted high nines, and I mean, I have the six. 60 white pages just because that was something I was more comfortable paying for. Um, sure. But but you know the the, the yeah thousand over thousand dollars for that and the ninety eight it's tough. And then and for, like you said, five times that's that's the tough part. Yeah. So the nine six goes for three twenty five, which means that a time it's it's it more than the time five basically. Yeah. It's five times as much as a nine six to get that nine eight. Now the reason could have something to do with, like we've often said, the availability. There's only 83 nine eights. There are 215 nine sixes, 261 nine fours, and almost 200 nine twos. Okay. Not to mention the nearly 150 nine O's and eight fives. So there's a there's a there's just a huge frequency between eight five and nine six, and then a precipitous sort of drop off to the nine eight. Yep. So just something to be to be thinking about. Um, uh, the copy I'm buying has three sigs. Guy wants thirteen hundred for a nine six, but it depends on the signatures, right? I mean, Chad, if it's a Stan Lee and a Claremont and a Cockrum, then yeah, I mean, obviously those are going to be the ones expensive. Biggie says, be worth buying the 9.6 and try to bump it up. So this is the great. I'm so glad you brought this up, Biggie, because it's been a bit of a theme yep. in the first, uh, what are we on, 12 issues or so of this comic that we've been talking about. There are a ton of these books. And a an investor flipper, I feel like this is the run to, to, to do that. If yep. you can find old slabbed 9.6s of some of these key books, I think uh, I got issues with saying that the multiplier was if you could afford like four or five of them, press and clean all of them. And if you get a grade bump out of any one of them, it is paid for all and then some. Yeah, it's a it's a, a great thing to consider if you can afford to, uh, you know, pull the trigger on a couple of these. You know, if you hit one, it's going to pay off uh, for all for the rest of them. If you hit two, then you're up. You're up big time at that point. So. I mean, admittedly, the odds are real slim, and it is challenging to find nine sixes in the old slabs that are that are pressable defect kind of books. Yeah, and books age, right? The book could fade, the colors of the pages could change, so you could definitely strike out big and get a nine four as a result. Um, but yeah, I feel like Biggie, you're totally right that the, that if you had that money to play around, there are some opportunities to get a huge profit 
from getting that press clean bump. If you have a really good presser cleaner, uh, these these are definitely those big boy books for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and you can't just like you can't just find it online and try to take your shot there because you have to really be able to look at the book. And I feel like pictures won't do it justice. Like I feel like it's a situation where you have to have the book physically in your hand and be able to pick, really look closely and, like you said, find those defects that are indeed or in fact um, pressable. Right. Um, which that too you have to be good, you know good and knowledgeable of even that stuff, which. You know, I'm still learning a lot of that stuff. Uh, so oh, I can easily. Sure. I'm nowhere uh, yeah. near ready for this. Yeah, I could yeah. not pull this off. This is not me saying, I, it's me saying I'm jealous of people that have those skills and can do yeah. that because this is clearly a run where you can make that money. The the the, the, the five times jump from nine six to nine eight is just not that common. Uh, so oh, it, it, it's oh. a huge bump. Yeah. It's crazy to think we we had this conversation um, with issues back in back when we reviewed issue 100. Was he he was our guest for 100? You were a guest for 100, but I think and, he mentioned it in the chat. I think a couple of times before we had him on. You know he so, did. Yeah, he definitely. I know. Yeah, we definitely talked. I feel about like it was that. 95 and 96 that that came along, and we were talking about the the the, yeah. the sort of dramatic gap. Yeah, the early the, the or the mid 90s. Yeah, I I was just thinking. Um, I can't believe that that was only like a month ago that we had him on. I, I uh, feel like we've had so many different things going on. Uh, <laughs> Chet says he'll help you figure out the grades if you need help based on looking at it. All right. There you go. So I want to thank uh, TJ. I haven't seen him say anything in the chat for a while. I'm sure he's just eating while he's watching. Uh, but TJ it hooks me up, hooks us up, I should say, with the – Info for the slideshow. This is go collect information uh, that he basically, he's probably already sent me the X-Men 105 info. He usually sends me while we're on the show. So this is only one week old. If you don't have go collect, you can kind of get some information as of today, 11, 17, 2020, where this book is more or less. Obviously, they fluctuate. I think when we did Giant Size and 94, both of those books fluctuated so much he sent me it again right before we did the show because I had to make changes because they've been fluctuating uh, as these uh, characters possibly join the, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm, damn. So thank you, TJ. Yeah, thanks, TJ. Um, so that's it. X-Men 90, uh, X-Men 104, I should say. So now we are almost exactly, I think, 12 issues into this, uh, into this saga. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we've covered a lot of stuff here, man. And, and, uh, the stories are detailed. There, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. And as we were saying, like all these little, uh, you know, pieces of X, you know, other stories that he picks up on throughout, you know, we're, we're building up to something big. So looking forward to that. And, um, it's been really good. It's been fun. So for those that aren't aware, we do trivia at the end of every night. We want to give away some things. We're only about a third of the way through this uh, this hardcover, so it's not going to be any time real, real soon that we do our giveaways. But uh, we're keeping tally. We're keeping track of where people are on the overall list yep. and trying to give away some fun stuff for everybody. Yep. Got a couple questions tonight. Yeah. Do you want to go first or should I go first? Um, go ahead. You can go first. All right. My first question has to do with the slabs that I had behind me last time. I had three slabs behind me and they all had one Marvel character on them somewhere. Who was the character that was on all three of those slabs? And I realize I got to open the uh, YouTube chat because sometimes the YouTube versus the stream yard, you know, you get a little, a little something of a difference here. So I want to make sure that I got the right thing. Oh, uh, let's see here. Oop, I see the correct answer twice already. So let me jump back over to the stream yard and see if I can highlight it. Yeah. Magic Lasso with the first correct answer. It was Spider-Man. Now, one of the issues was what if Spider-Man had to do with Spider-Woman, but he was still in the corner box art. So shout out to you. Lasso, moving up this list, you get a nice. raffle ticket. You get a raffle ticket for the Omnibus Volume 2 and you've moved your way up, you are now in fourth place on the overall. Nice Dominating. Job. Second place goes to Brandon, Comics Kings. Now, let's see here. I'm just going to write. 
I was going to write Brandon, but now I'm going to do it right. Comics Kings. You get a point. We also give a point for the funniest answer, and it's going to be Beta Ray Jim with Aunt May. <laughs> so there you go, Aunt May with the with the joke for Beta Ray Jim. Beta Ray Jim is in a solid second place right now on the overall list. Right. As a reminder, we're going to pull at some point a raffle ticket based on those people who answered first correctly in these things. Uh, that person wins the Omnibus Volume 2. Then we're going to go to my overall list, and whoever is at the top wins my prize unless they just won the raffle, in which case I'll go to the second place person. So being in second place could be a good spot to be overall. Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Uh, my first question. Uh, it's a it's a pretty easy one, um, and if anything, it's easy to look up. Uh, so be ready. Um, but what was the official title of last issue? They all have those titles on the inside that first splash page, and this one was written up on the wall as as Nightcrawler was being carried by the Leprechaun. <laughs> and I and that should be the very like second page of the panels of the uh, slideshow that I show. So. Yeah. Sorry if uh, if I don't I did not remember it. I needed to uh, take a second and kind of like wait, what was it? it? It also is shared at the end of the issue before that, the way that we have you know at the bottom. So it definitely stands out. Oh, yep. Magic Lasso, first one in the room. Lasso on top of his game. Yes, indeed. Getting a second raffle ticket, getting two more points in the overall, and then Chet with the bonus point. Chet right there at third place overall, right behind Beta Ray Jim, pushing his way in. Uh, see if there's any good funny answers. Uh, if you can think of a funny answer for what they could have titled last week's uh, comic, feel free to feel free to throw your comedy in the chat while I give out our second question from my side. My question has to do with some exciting information we learned in X-Men 103. The question is, we, we learned Logan's real name, or I should say the name he goes by. We learned that Wolverine is called Logan. My question is, what is the name of the leprechaun who told him this? What is the name of the leprechaun who spoiled Wolverine's name? This was a tough one. I, I couldn't remember it. Oh, I, I see the winner already. I remember the scene very well, but I, I couldn't remember it. Ooh, I'm going to give a – I have a tie for this here. Firstly, Juggernaut decides to take up Olympic diving. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Second, planes, trains, and automobiles by TJ. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I'm giving a point to both of those guys because that's hilarious. Great answers. Great answers. Can't <laughs> mess with Bader. Bader and Jim, he's always throwing that comedy out. Okay, so what is the name of the guy, the name of the leprechaun? It's not, <laughs> they're so great names, oh, but I'm giving it to Rod. The comedy answer is Perry by Justin Rican and his comics. <laughs> oh, Rod, you get the comedy answer, but nobody's giving me the actual answer. Maybe people don't know the name of the leprechaun who told us Wolverine's first name. I just found it, but it, it is, uh, yeah, it is not common. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah, you would not just naturally guess this. It's not <laughs> Bob or Joe or anything. Oh, I see the first correct answer is out there. Just going to wait to see if somebody else can get it. You got to copy and paste. Somebody said it correctly. So if you want to copy and paste what somebody said, pick somebody that you think may have guessed the correct answer. Throw it in there for that extra bonus point. I think it's interesting too when he says his name. He doesn't say my name is. He says no. I'm called. I'm called. I'm called. Yeah, that's what people call me. Yeah, I'm called Mike. And Wolverine should have been like, yeah, well, people call me Midget and Dwarf. <laughs> so first correct answer was Chet. It is Patrick, which I believe is supposed to sound a little like Patrick, but mm. and Beta Ray Jim copied and pasted well and got an extra bonus point. Those guys are neck and neck for that second place slot. But issues has been absent for quite a while, so yeah, Definitely yeah, that's true. To gain think, some ground, what a guy! Rod, please eating a late dinner salad. Well, thank you for hanging with us, man. I know it's ten o'clock over there, so much appreciated. 
We got one last mystery question here from Justin. Wait, Rod is on the west on the east coast. Yeah, oh, he's, he's in Florida. Florida. Right? That's yep. right. I knew that. Never mind. I knew that. I was just thinking for some reason west coast. Um, all right. The last question that I have is: What is the unique prop that Nightcrawler used during his disguise when he tricked? juggernaut and uh <laughs> and tom he had, a, he had a very unique prop with him that i i could not help but keep laughing at as as you you john pointed out uh <laughs> I, it just like, struck me it just struck me as like <laughs> wait where did that come from i don't think his i don't think tony stark's uh, gadget creates you gotta you. you gotta you just check the closet and then there's a whole list of them you know like right <laughs> in a, in any castle has them any castle has them it's in yeah, it's in that room. You just keep you. That's where you store it. <laughs> you have a whole. Room it's like Moira there. getting the a, the AR fifteen. You know, right uh, in the in the armory. So there you right. go. <laughs> lasso. Wow, three out of four lasso. Wow, lasso doing the the Lord's work tonight. <laughs> and I'll tell you, lasso, you're only a few spots behind the the two boys chasing down second place. So you're right there. Nice. Bonus point goes to Jackson Roy Kirk getting a, getting a spot there. And let's see. I didn't pick a funny answer. What prop did he have? What was his uh, – it was <laughs> Jim with the shake weight. <laughs> uh, <Peter Ray. laughs> getting that comedy point every time. He's been dominating the comedy tonight. Those are tough. Okay, you got to be quick. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh man i'll tell you this show has been a whole lot of fun we were 12 issues in 12 episodes in there's a playlist on my channel i don't know if justin's made a playlist but if you want to go back at any point and catch hey i just reread issue 98 what did the guys say about it what's that book worth right now yeah you can jump back through and find the different episodes of what we've talked about we like justin said at the beginning we are taking next week off uh with the holidays and everything I just didn't think I'm going to have the time to prep the slideshow. That's really the reason. I probably have the time to hang out, but I don't know if I've got the time to make a slideshow. Um, and I, I think the slideshow is partly what I think is most uh, valuable about this. So being able to see the panels and see the, the value in, of the comic is kind of important. So, yeah. So we're going to skip a week, which means December 1st, we'll be back on Justin's channel for issue 105. And Jeffrey Comic-Con Henson is going to join us. I was super excited to know that he had uh, at least one book from this current Omni. Uh, so it'll be it'll be fun to have him on to, to, to discuss it. Yeah, that'll be good. Uh, let's see. Jackson Roy Kirk says, how many in the first Omnibus? So oh, all the issues are right here on the back. It's uh, what, three, four, five, six, seven times. One, two, three, five. 35 issues plus one, two, three, four, five others. So 40 issues are in the omnibus, but it includes giant size X-Men uh, as well as, I think there's an annual in here somewhere, right? Is there an annual? Uh, Maybe it's the second, um, let, you know, let me, giant, if you don't mind, size one in, let me uh, grab the other here. omnibus here. By the way, there are some amazing um, black and white um, artwork that they have in the back in the back when we, when we get to, to the end of this yep. we'll have to take some photos or something and put them in the slides to to really highlight a lot of that stuff yeah absolutely, there's yeah. there are some stunning absolutely stunning work the, and the i will say there. one of the things i've mentioned when we've done this show is how much the classic x-men comic books meant to me when i was a kid and yeah. they include all the covers for the classic x-men in the back as well yeah it's so great uh, no, it doesn't look like they have any annuals in there. It must be the second omnibus I was thinking of, which has, what, three, six times 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 20. And this one has 29 issues, but it has a bunch of the Marvel fanfare issues as well as uh, two king-size annuals, uh, X-Men king-size annual five and king-size Avengers annual 10, of course, the first appearance of Rogue. Uh, are included in volume two that'll be great so a lot there's a lot of books 40 issues in this first omnibus but 
Uh, and one of them is Giant Size X Men, so it's a pretty big book. is in its own side. It's in its own right. Yep. Let's see. I hate it when they cut it off in the Dark Phoenix saga. Yeah. So they yeah. stop before the Dark Phoenix saga. <clears throat> they have the the first issue is the the White Queen issue. They stop at issue one thirty one. And then I think they start right in the middle of the dark, or at the beginning of the Dark Phoenix saga, or is issue one thirty one the first issue of the Dark? No, Phoenix? one one twenty nine is technically the first. Oh, so they did stop right in the middle. Then there you go. Yeah, yeah. It is um, weird. So there you go. That's how uh, they get yeah. you to keep buying them. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chet says I have homework for all of you. What is Nightcrawler's very unique feature that the creators gave him physically, not a power? Curious. Not oh, it's, a, it, it's not his tail. Not that invisibility thing with the wall from last. That episode. invisibility thing with the wall. <laughs> the letter pages are really cool. Yeah, they're uh, interesting. Yeah. I so, haven't glanced at them. Uh, if you guys don't know Justin's channel, if you haven't been checking this out, then click the link down below. Uh, do you have uh, who you got coming on with you this coming weekend? Do you got somebody coming on for your uh, origins? Yeah, so I'm actually gonna have um, this guy. He goes by Pat Pat Caves, uh, the the Pat Cave. His name is Pat, um, and he does a lot of different. Um, he dresses up as like uh, like Green Lantern, uh, a bunch of different superheroes that he gets into uh, for different costumes and stuff. Um, I met him. Where I, I don't know. I, I, oh, I met him like in a we like on LinkedIn during a Gary Vaynerchuk interview. I don't know. It's very unique. But anyways, he, he talked about his love for comics and, you know, he was starting his own YouTube page. And so I like found him, reached out to him and then we've just kind of become friends since. And so he's very new. Like I would say a lot of you might not even know who he is yet. Um, I did an interview with him like uh, three months ago on his YouTube channel. He's just growing things right now, but uh, he's going to be on. He's really, um, he's really good with video editing and stuff. Anyways, I'll have him on uh, this, nice. this Saturday. So that'll be fun. Yeah. So. So you? You for me, I'm, I, I've got book club tomorrow and then I've got my pull list video drops every Thursday. So the look ahead at what books are coming out the 25th, you can find that on my channel dropping tomorrow. Um, I got some great books today. There's some great books that dropped this week. So definitely if you want to know what books I picked up today, I dropped that video last week. You can find that in my pull list. I think I even highlighted it in my community tab today because I thought Mip, maybe people want to know when they go to their shop. Um, but that is about it. Oh, this coming Saturday night, I'm having a Joel Schumacher uh, look back. We lost the great director Joel Schumacher this year. I know that he gets a lot of hate for Batman and Robin, but he made some pretty amazing movies, including probably my all-time favorite vampire film, Lost Boys. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're going to be looking back at the career of Joel Schumacher for Saturday night's drinks and movies. If you're a Schumacher fan and want to join me, just let me know and we can see if we can find a space to have some more people hang out with us. Uh, last time we did Sean Connery, I think it went pretty well. So now we're going to look ahead to Joel Schumacher. Nice. Those are always fun shows. I caught a couple of years before. They're good. Hey, it's fun to have Saturday night and talk about something other than comics. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good change up. Have a couple drinks. Hang out. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, everybody. So we're going to head out of here. Uh, thank you every much. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming by. And we will see you in two weeks on Justin's channel. Uh, yeah, I want to say too, John, I don't know how to say this. Chod? 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 <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> you, you, you get it now. <laughs>